Welcome inside Alaska Airlines Arena for this quad meet that is going to be rocking between your 27th ranked Washington Huskies, number 33 Southern Utah, number 34 BYU, and number 56 Sac State. It's a quad meet to close out the home season for your Huskies, the last meet of the season before they head into postseason play. I'm so excited to be joined by Bailey Rowe tonight. I'm Elisa Mao, and uh, we're going to be talking all things conference championships heading into the postseason. Senior night, Bailey, what does a meet like tonight mean for these seniors? You know, this has been something that they've been working for since they were children, and to be able to be at University of Washington for the last four years, this is something for them to celebrate and go out on the floor and be with the, the team, be with the crowd one last time before heading into postseason. It's a time for them not just to reflect, but really just showcase everything that they've been working for their entire you know, lives as gymnasts. So it's exciting for them. It's exciting for even the athletes that look up to them as well. And I think a quad meet is super important for today because quad meets are, you know, they'll have at least four teams. Pac-12 will have eight. MPSF, I think, has six. Big 12, I think, has five. I can't totally remember off the top of my head. Um, but can you talk a little bit about this um, quad meet structure and how this is going to look different with the double dual format today? Yeah, yes. So I really enjoy this double dual format because you get to see more routines than you would use Usually, if it was a if it was a typical um, four, I guess four teams on the floor. But right now, what we're going to see in the pairing up of events, you're going to have vault and balance being going off at the same time, and then they'll switch up to uneven bars and floor exercise. So again, you're going to be able to see more athletes compete in this new structure. And it's it's mayhem for us to try to track. <laughs> so we're going to do our best um, to keep up with everything that's maybe not on screen at the time. So when we switch back, it may be mid-routine. Obviously with the Huskies will be our primary focus for the night, but we want to show as much gymnastics to you as you can to showcase all these phenomenal athletes that are close to wrapping up their regular season. Um, you know, Southern Utah, UW, and BYU, this is their regular final regular season. Sac State goes to a, a quad down in Berkeley on Sunday. Um, so it's it's a, a great, to be a fun Friday night. It is. And exciting for them. Yes. So a little bit about the coaching staffs here. So Washington, as you know, led by Jen Llewellyn in her third season. Southern Utah, coached by Scotty Bauman. He's in his 33rd season, the longest tenured coach of any sport wow. at Southern Utah. Um, and then BYU and Sac State led by alums from their school. So Guard Young leads BYU, former 
BYU national champion, Olympic silver medalist in 2004. Um, and then Sac State, really exciting, led by Melissa Genovese in her first season. She was a former athlete. Mm -hmm. And then their whole team actually is the only one in the NCAA to be made up of all former athletes from their school. Wow. Which is pretty cool. And that I is very cool. forgot to mention off the top, you spent three years coaching yes. at UW, <laughs> also six-time NCAA All-American, 2016 Pac-12 Beam champion. Wow. So all, all the accolades yeah. here. Yeah, all the list <laughs> Thank you, Wow. <laughs> Why not? I love it. I love it. But yeah, that's impressive that they have a coaching staff, all of former athletes. I think that just they continue to bleed the culture with that, which is awesome. And they're really hitting their stride. The last 10 meets that Sac State has had, their average over the last 10 meets is the highest average over any 10 meet period in their career, in their yeah. history. Wow. Which is awesome. I know that's a sort of obscure stat, but just sort of shows that, you know, as a new coaching staff taking over a program, it can take some time. Yes. To put your stamp on it. Yeah. And they're doing that already this season, which is incredible. I think we're seeing that with Jen Llewellyn yes. as well, that the Huskies are hitting their stride in her third season. Some yeah. of these athletes were recruited by you. Can you talk about the senior class that we're gonna be recognizing today? Yeah, the senior class has kind of been the glue throughout these last three years, I would say, and it's, they've been such good role models for the for the newcomers coming in as Jen, Jen Llewellyn had stepped in as well. Um, and I really, really like about the coaching staff is that they're not afraid to utilize their freshmen, their underclass, Men and get them ex that experience so that when they are those seniors, they have that not just confidence in what they can do, but they can also help those that are underneath them. So, yeah, I think, you know, on vault, we'll see four underclassmen yeah. in the lineup. McKenna Carnese is a late, or, or Emily Pyers. We're not sure who we're going to see in that spot. Mary McDonough out sick, unfortunately, so won't see on her on vault tonight. But just that story of UW using its youth. Um, it's been great to see Kristen Lynn really stepping up for the Huskies in at least three events, almost all season. Um, and then McKenna Carnese, Mary McDonough, um, yes. the transfer, Emily Pyers, adding some depth, which is yeah, really exciting. It is exciting. And what I am super excited about as well is, you know, like you mentioned, they're hitting their stride. They've hit that 197 mark just once this year. They almost hit it, I believe it was last weekend. And so, to be able to build on that, being back home, um, is that's going to be fun to watch as well as we head into postseason, where you're going to want that 197 plus score. And these three, the three teams ranked highest here. So BYU, Southern Utah, Washington, separated by just six spots. They've all hit 197 once. And I talked to Jen before the meet, and she said, we all just, every, they sort of pow out, and we're like, we all just want to hit 197. <laughs> no one cares who wins, which, you know, of course, we want uh, the home team to win tonight. But um, it'll be a really tight and closely matched meet if, if every team, I mean, the dream every meet is for each team to hit six perfect routines, get their max highest score. Um, you know, Sacramento representing their athletes. It is also the, you know, getting towards the end of their seasons if they're competitive. State coming up soon, so um, just a all together fun yeah. Friday night coming your way. We've got just a couple seconds left in the one touch, and we've been watching Washington vault warm up closely because they're gonna make a game time decision, whether it's Carnese or Pyres in that sixth spot. The last two vaults they both did, maybe not their best. So it's gonna be a good coaching test for Jen to decide, uh, Jen and Jeffrey, who's one of the vault coaches, to decide what's happening there. But um, you'll see up on the screen, the vault lineup for Washington, Lily Tubbs will lead off, then Kristen Lynn, Emily Innes, Skylar Killer Wilhelm, Lana Navarro, and McKenna Carnese is listed there now. That's something that Jen can change. Um, at any point until you know they salute, yeah. they they salute. So we'll just see what happens. And then you want to give us the the bar lineup rundown? Yes. So BYU is going to be starting on bars here, and it's going to start. You know they're going to be starting out. They're what they're going to be looking for right now in the season are going to be those strong handstands and those stuck landings and the dynamics of bars. And it looks like. They're gonna be getting started here with Alex Mason leading leading it off. She starts out with a nice handstand on the low bar. Going right into that chapash. 
Going back down with that tack. Just a little bit of a leg separation, but good start so far. She goes back up to the high bar. She, again, she's been looking for that last handstand. She was a little bit short, going right into this dismount here. Double layout and a slight forward hop, but really good start for the BYU um, Cougars there. That was a great routine. And here we go, UW sophomore Lily Tubb to lead them off. Weird run. She did a, a weird stutter step in between, which definitely impacted her um, rotation and her distance from the vault. She was way closer than normal. I was about to say she, she has a career high nine eight seven five. So if you, yeah, if you watched that replay, that can be really, really scary. That step forward, at least three tenths. The lack of distance is going to be four tenths. Really tough start for them. And then over here on beam, we've started with Alyssa Fernandez from Southern Utah. Excellent aerial back handspring series to start. She stuttered her foot a little bit in between the two, but really covered up nicely. Solid pitch front. She's hit 10 of 11 routines this season. Wow. That's why you want somebody like that in the leadoff position, somebody that's very consistent and can really start out that rotation strong. And Here, she, yeah. She's a, just a freshman. Wow. Nails the landing. Beautiful stuck side arrow one and a half. That was a great start. And as a freshman, that's even more impressive because now she can just build on that throughout her career. Over here on the floor, starting out is going to be Simone Dumas Guzman. She's heading into her next pass here, front layout, front full. I like that she had that rise in that second, um, that second flip there. It's been a pretty strong routine. She's had great landings. I love the dynamics of this floor routine. It's very powerful, just like her tumbling. And again, a good start for Sac State. And here we see the vault from Kristen Lynn, the freshman. Want to see her say super straight. And unfortunately takes the big step back and then um, doesn't uh, bring her feet together. She takes the st another step back. So unfortunately that's gonna be a really large deduction as well, those two steps. She has so much incredible power, just hasn't quite harnessed it yet. Yes, I would agree with that. You wanna keep those hips flat. This is a great, again, just very powerful routine starting out here. This is Kennedy, or sorry, excuse me, Eva Jorgensen. Just a large, just a bit of a step on that dismount. It seems like she just let go of the bar a little bit too early, but she had a very strong routine, great handstands, just, need, just needed to stick that landing. And we know live scores aren't quite streaming yet, so we're gonna try to keep up. Um, Lily Tubb started with a 9.6. Yes, and Alex Mason had a 9.75 to start out for BYU. I think I saw a 985 flash for Alyssa Fernandez on beam, which would be super well deserved. Yes. What, that's a great lead off. Emily Innes next for the Huskies. She started the season, she was the first vaulter in their first meet of the season and nailed her layout full. She has been sticking really well. Don't want to jinx her. Meanwhile, this is Kennedy McLean. Kennedy is Southern, a sophomore from South Jordan, Utah. And Ava on bars just posted another 9.75 for BYU. And over here on the floor, we have Kara Putin, who you just saw there. Just a little short on that Rudy. Seemed as, she, as if she didn't get that punch that she really wanted. You can see it here. Looks like she piked her hips a little bit too much. Didn't quite get that set that she needed, but you know, that that is gonna be a little bit of a deduction, but again, better than a fall. And super great height on that gainer full from Kennedy to McLean for another very solid routine. From Southern Utah, two hit routines thus far as Emily Innes gets the green flag. Huskies with some low scores already really need to dial in their landings on these next four vaults. Let's see if she can do it. Very nice height, great distance, does have the hop, but mid-air 
I saw Jen Llewellyn throw her arms up because she knew her entry is good. She gets to the table quickly, does have a little bit of the pike down, but by far the best so far for the Huskies. Yes. And now we're gonna go back to bars here for BYU. We're looking at Kylie Equinto. Nice handstand to start off that routine. She's gonna again do that shaposh right back down to the low bar with that pack. I love how she kept her legs glued together. Wow, good fight on that. She did have a little bit of a mishap there, but covers it well. Yeah, impressive that there was no major break in form as yeah. she does that full pirouette. Yes, and she finishes up here with a double layout. Very nice job. Just that slight hop back on that landing. I just think that the BYU right now just needs to look for those landings a little bit sooner to dial them in and get that stuck landing to, for that exclamation point at the end of the routine. SUU is looking great on beam right now. Yeah, Ellie Cacciola having a fantastic routine thus far. She just wink at us too. I think she <laughs> is owning this beam routine for sure. Tiny balance check, but she does not lack for confidence, which you love to see on beam. And as you mentioned before too, I mean, Emily did have the best vault thus far for UW, getting that 9.825. Oh gosh, she was going so hard for the stick that unfortunately just sat that down. Up next for Sac State here on floor, we have Athena Jones. And yeah, sometimes that happens when you go off of those sticks. And vault here from Skylar Killa Wilhelm nails it, right? Nailed it. Slide maybe. That is just one foot. She didn't need to move. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Watching her progress on this vault. But look how flat her hips are throughout. Incredible. Yep, so it does take a little slide. Flares the arms out to stop the rotation. She's been training the one and a half. They said maybe in postseason they throw it in, but when you're going 9-9 nine, nine, like she just did, sort of a risk reward decision that I'm, I'd lean towards reining that in. Yes, it is. Does. And it, back on floor, Athena, she's been doing a pretty good job. She just had a couple of short landings. Just seems as if she's not quite tight on the punch, but overall I love their dance and their music for Sac State very fun and it's really showing off their personality which is exactly what the judges are looking for and it just makes the crowd more into it as well yeah the, the confidence and the eye contact it's not contrived it doesn't look choreographed it looks very natural yes heading into her last pass here she's gonna go front Rudy that was the best landing that she had so we'll see um, how the judges take the first two landings there and this is the freshman phenom, Naya Randolph, set a school record 39-6 in the all-around last week. Is a super strong athlete. Freshman out of Las Vegas, and Jim Katz. Good control on that acro combination, just a slight balance check. Ooh, I love the inward full turn as well. A little different. She, you can tell she's just a tiny bit nervy, wants to get off this beam. <laughs> I mean, starting on beam is tough, but it's very good experience for going into postseason because you don't know what event you're going to start on. So having that practice is going to be great for her and that entire team. I like how she, you know, she took the step on the landing, but did the hold position that you're supposed to do. Yes. <laughs> for the full one second. And here we have the only 10 0 start value from the Huskies, Lana Navarro, one and a half here. Wow. Really nice height, more distance than we've seen. She's just done this. I think now that's her fourth meet. Takes the pretty sizable hop forward. But let's take a look here. Good block, nice body position, but yeah, just arches down almost to come, to find the floor and, and has to take that hop. Yeah, that was the best ball I think I've seen her do um, this season with the one and a half. So I love that she's improving. And here on floor, we have Emma Morgenthaler. She starts out with her team with that front Rudy back layout. What a fun pass. And she keeps her legs together in that Rudy, which is very hard to do. So good job to her. 
Nice lead pass there. You do want to see the split be a little bit more 180, but she gets the she gets the leap all the way around, which is exactly what the judges are going to be looking for as well. Heading into her last pass, double pike, strong landing. This is a great routine for Sac State. I think their best one so far in the lineup. You're also going to see some, some teams do those two pass routines like Emma is going to be doing here. And, you know, sometimes that's better on the athlete's body, which is really nice. And, you know, if you can get that 10.0 start value with only doing two passes and get that score that you need, that's okay. Yep. And that was a dismount from Ali Kuto for Southern Utah. She had a little bit of a balance check on her series, but finished nicely. They are going to want to drop that 9-2 from Ellie Cacciola. So important final athlete for them. And, uh, Anna Hartley will conclude their beam rotation. And it looks like McKenna Carnese has got the nod for the Huskies. Their last three have been over 9.825. Lana Navarro got a 9.85, Skyler's 9.9. Uh, McKenna has vaulted a few times this year. Not for a few meets, she's been in exhibition. She'll do the Yurchenko layout full. But she was a phenomenal vaulter in J.O. She scored a 10 at one point. And has a very nice landing, a really solid vault to get thrown in like she did. Had a, a pretty big hike, pike down, not the most distance. But for the freshman to step into that spot, really important. She didn't have the best position on the board. Her knees buckled a little bit, but really overcame to finish off that rotation for the Huskies. And this is Anna Hartley. Slight balance check there. Again, this is the nerve wracking position where they really want to drop the score the 9-2 that they have. And that was a beautiful double pike by Grace Gilman. She had the height, she had the kick out. I wouldn't have taken one deduction on that. A nice, maybe not a chair for intended to be a side semi or not, but she held it like it was as she winds up with the dismount. She's a senior. Second pass for Grace Gilman was that front layout front pull. It was a little bit flat again, like I mentioned before. You do want to see that second flip rise. And Grace is one of those athletes that could, you're going to see do that three pass routine here. She ends with a nice double tuck. See if she can get that landing. Just a slight little shuffle, but holds it pretty well, covers it pretty well. And another good routine for Sac State. And their highest score was the last routine by Emma, and that was a 9.85. And, and I think, no, go ahead. I think this one will be just as good, if not just maybe around that 9.8 range, just based on that last pass there. And so excited to see Emily Pyers here in exhibition, the transfer who used to Davis. She's going to do a full on, either a pike or a tuck off. It's sort of a game time decision. Looks like she goes for the pike. Really nicely done. That's a 10 0 start value, takes the step back. But McKenna Carnese in her sixth spot goes career high 985. So the Huskies end up with a 49.15 on vault, a very solid start for them. They want to. Vault is their lowest scoring event. They just want to see those scores continue to rise. Yeah, and getting above that 49 range is going to help them to get to that 197 that they're going to be looking for as well. So it looks like Southern Utah will end up with a 48-9. Ali Kutu, 9-6 to close, and then Anna Hartley, the 9-8. So they were able to drop the 9-2 from Ellie Cacciola, so they'll go 48-9 there. And we have one more routine here on the floor, and this is gonna be Sarah Luttrell. She starts out the routine with a nice high-flying double pike. Just very close to that, that line there, but she does keep her heel in. 
it's so impressive how these athletes know exactly where the corners are. I mean, I was a gymnast. I still am impressed by some people that just know their senses and know where the lines are. Oh, fun moonwalk on the floor. I think you did that on beam, if I'm remembering correctly. Yes, I did. The beam was a little bit smaller, trying to get those feet around, but nice leaps there. She, I liked how she actually did get to that 180 and a little bit above that as well. And then obviously getting all the way around is gonna be very important, which she did. She's one of their all-arounders. Went 39.425 a couple weeks ago to win the all-around versus Air Force. It'll be a fun all-around competition today. It will. We have Skylar Killer Wilhelm, who beat Jade Carey at OSU last week. And then you have Naya Randall for Southern Utah, who went 39-6. And then Sarah here with the, you know, they're right all in with a few tenths of each other. Yeah, and you just saw there that was a little bit short of a double tuck. Again, I whenever when I was coaching, I like to say how you land is usually how you took off. And I don't know if they're going to replay it there. It just seemed like she didn't get her chest quite up on that last pass. So let's take a look here. She goes round off back handspring. Chest is arms didn't get quite up, as you can see, and that's why she landed short. But good finish for them. Everyone hit their routines, had some slight short landings here and there, but good start for Sac State. And if we want to kind of go, if we want to go over the scores, BYU on bars, um, they started out with um, with D Tumas Guzman getting a 9.75, and then next was Eva Jorgensen. She got the 9.6. Excuse me, sorry. <laughs> she got that 9.75 as well. Kylie Quinto 9.725. Lindsay Hunter Kempler getting that 9.75. Anissa Al Al Alvarado, excuse me, 9.85. And yes, and tied again by Anna Bramblett with that 9.85. So good start for BYU on the bars. They're going to want to improve that score coming into beam. And, you know, that was a good start for everybody. And it's sometimes the nerves are out on the first event. So being able to settle those nerves down settling in and going to the next event is going to be um, fun to watch. And we talked about it being a close meet. We'll have one exhibition before they move rotation. So I'll let you give us the rundown <laughs> of their final athlete here. Yes, this is Jillian Lastra. And I really enjoy the fact that we can still do exhibitions this late in the season. It uh, really allows athletes to get that experience out on the floor and be able to compete Jillian's gonna start us out here with a roundup back handspring double pike. This has too much juice and didn't quite find the landing, but it's right there. And, you know, she did go out of bounds, but again, this is why they do the exhibition to get that practice, to get that experience out on the floor. I like that you could see her set. It was visible. Yes. It really helped with that height. Yeah. Second pass, front layout, front full. Again, you want to see that second flip rise, but she stays in bounds. Slowing it down into her leap pass. Nice split. I love the dramatics of this routine. And she does a very good job of showing it off as well. Last a freshman. Yep. Last pass. Double tuck. Pulls it through. Nice landing there. You didn't quite see that same set that you did on the double pike, but for a freshman, getting out there, getting that experience, that was a great routine because that's only going to get better as as the meets go on and as the years go on. That's a great that's a great one to have in the seventh position, you know, moving forward as well. Definitely, and ending with the double tuck, doing those three passes. Yes. She's got the strength for it. Um, and that, it will do it for our first rotation. My, these quad beats go by so fast. It, yes. We talked about it being a tight knee off the top, and it is the Huskies 49-1-5 are in the lead, followed by BYU 49 flat. 
Southern Utah 48.9, and then Sac State's 48.75. So these, uh, this new double dual format means that the athletes progress in Olympic order. So they just move from vault to bars, bars to beam, beam to floor, floor to vault. And well, they're in the midst of this two minute period where they march to the other event, which <laughs> most of them are already there, just sort of standing around waiting for this. <laughs> Uh, and then they'll have their four minute touch period. So we'll take step away for this few minutes and catch you for rotation too. are back for rotation two. The Huskies on bars will be led off by Dia Moody, then Kristen Lynn, Olivia Opegaard, Skylar Killer Wilhelm, Lily Tubbs, and Taylor Russin. What are we looking for for these Huskies on the bar lineup? We're looking again, like I said in the very beginning, we're looking for them to really just put it together. They have an incredible bar lineup that it, they're capable of 99 plus, every single one of those athletes. And so we're again, we're gonna be looking for the the tight, tight handstands on top of the bar. Throughout the routine, you wanna see dynamic flow, as I like to say. Um, you can kind of see when a gymnast rushes throughout the routine, but you wanna see a, a rhythm throughout. And then again, that exclamation at the end of their routine with that stuck landing. It's one of their lowest scoring events this season, which is surprising because I think they have good swingers and the potential yes. is there. If one of them doesn't have the best routine and that score sags just a little bit in the middle, you can tell it sometimes affects the scoring potential. It yeah. shouldn't, yeah. but you were here the last time that the Huskies were at home and Skylar Killa Wilhelm went 9975. Yes. So we'll see if she can get the 10 from both as we start Sac State on vault with Grace Gilman. A very, very clean Yurchenko layout half. That is worth a 995. Grace, a local product coached at uh, Emerald City, and you said coached her a little bit as well. Very exciting. Yes, and we're gonna head over to bars, Dia Moody. Let's see if she can get us start, started out with a solid routine. She starts out with that same chapash that we saw the other athletes do from BYU. She starts out beautiful form, right back down to the low bar. Slight leg separation. I don't know if the judges can see that from the side, but fights for that handstand there out of the half pirouette. Let's see if she can get this last handstand. Again, I would say it was a little bit short, but still a very clean routine, aggressive, and a slight shuffle on that dismount, but really good start for them. That's gonna be a great one to just continue to improve on. Let's see this dismount. Again, she needed to get her shoulders over the bar just a little bit more going into that handstand, but nice form in the air. Just sees it a little bit too late with that dismount. This is the end of Alex Mason's routine. The leadoff for BYU has been super clean so far. Love the aggressive dismount. Awesome double full. She tumbled into that. I like her hurdle into that round off like she was tumbling. She wasn't tentative at all. You can see that again here. Really, really nice. She did have that the little leg crossed, <laughs> but double folds are hard to begin with. And over here on floor, we're starting out with Alyssa Fernandez, and she just completed her first tumbling pass with double tuck, very clean. Alyssa going into her second pass, round up one and a half, front layout, good form in the air, and you saw that rise in that second flip. Alyssa's gonna do three passes here. She's gonna go front, Rudy. 
really nice start start for the S, for SUU. Um, that was a really good routine for Alyssa. We're catching up on Sophie Dudley's routine. Very clean start with the back handspring layout series. Good height on that straddle quarter. I want to see a little bit more snap to really define her 180 split. We have Kristen Lynn, freshman for the Huskies. Starting out with a unique bar release, a Ginger. I love Ginger, so it's great to see that she's doing it here. Back up to the high bar, good handstand. Just the dismount. Just seemed to let go of that bar just a little bit too soon, but again, for a freshman in the lineup, that was a great routine. Dudley closes out the beam routine with a nice round off one and a half. So two solid routines in for BYU. Alex Mason led off with a 9.825. You see that Ginger there. She did have that slight separation in her feet, but held on to it. A very nice full on tuck off for Sarah Fitzgerald at Sac State. Bella Lamidi before her did a tuck your chinko full for 9.675. You're seeing more and more of those full on vaults, which is gonna be a 10.0. Um, and I would say they're very difficult. So I it's mean, impressive to see that they're they're here and there's more of them. Right, to get that full turn completed at, in, within an angle that you could actually block and get a decent rotation and height on the flip is really impressive. And I just saw Kristen Lynn's score came in at a 9.725. So the Huskies are gonna wanna build on that and try to get into that 9.8 range. Over here on floor for SUU, you have Taylor Gill starting out with that double pike. I love how she kept her chest up on the takeoff as well as the landing. Second pass goes round off one and a half. A little short on that half, but nice split in the air for that extra bonus. She's smiling right at the judges there. How fun. This is Mina Margraf for BYU in the third spot. Dudley had a 9.725. Well connected, little bit of a bent back leg on the aerial, but no question about whether she got that connection or not. Double tuck, nice last pass there. Again, love how she's keeping her chest tall for no deduction. She finishes out that routine. That's gonna that's gonna be a higher score than Alyssa. Hopefully, you know she had a great dynamic routine. She did have that slight mishap on the half. Um, of her second pass, but really good again. And going over to bars, we have Olivia Opegard, and we're gonna look for her to have, you know, those straight knees. She had a little bit of a bent knee there, but really strong handstand heading into this Jaeger. I love the height that she gets on that. And again, solid handstand right back down to the low bar. I would say a little bit shy. We'll see what the judges do on that one. Strong handstand heading into her double layout. Let's see if she can get that stick. Just opens up too late, sees the ground too late, but really good routine for Olivia. Wow. A very nice one and a half vault from Emma Morgenthaler. I like the diversity in Sac State's vaults. None the same thus far. Yes. You can see there on that double layout, she scooped her feet in, and that's why you see that back, or the step on the landing there. But. Overall, hit those hands in routines, has the high flying skills, so really awesome, awesome routine for UW. No sticks thus far though, so they're yes. leaving a lot of tents on the table. I said this is the event where they're really hoping to clean things up and these landings, and the last three obviously are in that position for a reason because they have incredibly high scoring potential. Yeah, and, and you want to see the build on the routines as well, so. That's what they're doing. We're going 9.725, Dia Moody, 9.7, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. 9.725, um, Kristen Lennon, and 9.775 by Olivia. So they're just continuing to build on that event. I was shaking my head at the vault scores. Oh, no. One judge went 9.9 nine on the one and a half. The other went 9.75, which I think is an inappropriate split. 
and I thought was much closer to the 9-9 for that one and a half ball. Yes. Third up on four for SUU is gonna be Brinley Christensen. And the score before that for Taylor was a 9.8. Love that round off one and a half punch layout. She had feet glued together. Nice punch into that front layout to see that rise. This is Eliza Miller Crossman for BYU. Started out with a beautiful and high back swing layout series. I love when gymnasts are tumbling on the beam. It's so impressive. You want to you want to mimic what they're doing on the floor on the beam. That was a, a really nice extension on that switch half. You often see that back leg not at the 180. Back to floor with another very high Rudy for her. She's a powerful gymnast throughout and I love that she is getting up in the air, keeping her chest tall. That was a great routine for Brinley. And up next on bars for the Huskies is Skylar Killa Wilhelm. And it starts out with a beautiful, strong, aggressive handstand into her Pike Jaeger, perfect distance away from the bar into her bail. I just love the technique that Skylar has on bars. She is dynamic, just like you see in that cast handstand. She is all about the detail. Again, back up. Let's see if she can get this stick. I don't know what the judges are going to take. If really? I really don't know. And we say that a lot. And yes. you can take, you know, bent arms on a cast or little, you know, maybe leg separation under the bar when you're tapping for your giant. She has none of that there. Her technique is so sound. It is so sound. You see it here on that Pike Jaeger. You, I love that she even kept her toes above the horizontal mark into the bail as well. And again, just an exclamation on the on the last part of this routine into her dismount. Hits that last handstand, which is so hard to do in a pirouette skill, and no movement of her feet. First stick for the Huskies, and what a great stick for the Huskies. So needed. And it looks like a 9925. I disagree. <laughs> I guess, I mean, maybe she flexed her feet on the second flip of the double tuck, but that's never taken anywhere else. Mm -hmm. I hate that they decide to judge a little harder, but we're, uh, I certainly, we're certainly a little biased here, <laughs> but I just want the judging to be consistent. Yes, yes. And we always say they judge a little bit tighter here in Seattle. Rose Wilson up next for Sac State on ball. Nice landing wow. on that layout full. Good distance. A little bit of a pike down, but really nice. And this is Elise Rollins for BYU. Miller Crossman before her went 985. Very nice rotation so far for them. If she hits this, then they're in the clear hitting five sticks. She'll do a front aerial to a back handspring layout. Great connection. See BYU's coach, bean coach there at the end. She was also a former athlete. Natalie Brookman. And then Brogan Evanson, their vault and floor coach, was also an athlete at BYU. This is a really strong routine for Ellie. She has been dancing and showing off to not just her teammates, the crowd and the judges. So it's very fun to watch. You can already see it here, just in that little corner. She heads into her last pass. Front Rudy, a little sideways, a little wonky on that landing, but you know, another good routine for SUU. They've been building on their scores as well. Yeah, this is the rotation where you'll see Huskies only had a .15 buffer. And we just saw Lily save that handstand. She fought for that and is keeping that rhythm, which is so impressive. She was able to hold it back, hold it in, get it back together, hitting that last handstand. And I love watching long lines on bars. You can see this double layout. Slight shuffle of the feet. Just seemed like she was a little bit unsure of herself, but really, really good job of being able to pull that handstand back and finish out that routine. Takes so much ab strength to be yes. able to do that. Yes. 
But that just comes, you know, with time. She's a veteran, so she knows how to pull it back. She knows how to get back into her rhythm. And you can see that last handstand there. A little bit rushed, but beautiful lines here. Toe point is immaculate into this double layout. And again, just a little bit unsure of that landing. I don't, I don't know if she really needed that step, but really good job for Lily. And Southern Utah, not a score under 9-8 on floor. They are really closing the gap. Yeah, you can see there just briefly that it was building and that is exactly what you want to see. Brindley Anderson here, she went 9975 in her last time out at BYU. She's just a freshman. Tiny bobble there on the straddle half. Out of Orem, Utah, who's reigning Big 12 Newcomer of the Week. Her acro connection here in the side aerial. Very solid. She is so comfortable <laughs> up there as a freshman. The I love that. Facial choreography, really great. Nice, fast, clean dismount. Beautiful set for BYU. Six for six hits, great job. And they'll be able to drop that 9.675 as well. Definitely. Off of that routine. And Sac State putting up one of their best vault rotations of the year. Latrell closed them off with a 9.85. In closing out the Huskies, you're gonna see here Taylor Russin. She's another one of those athletes on bars that has a natural swing, but also just great form, great technique. And you'll see it just from the start of her routine. Looks like a little of a delay here that there are not, excuse me, not a <laughs> delay. It's the delay of this double dual yes. format. <laughs> That's what it is. Uh, oh my goodness. So important for them to practice this right now though. Yeah, this so waiting game. We'll, How did you manage the wait? You know, we practiced it in um, practice quite a bit and strong double tuck there by Kayla. Um, but yeah, we practiced it a lot. So we would have a timer, excuse me, that the routine before was Kayla, and this one is now Ellie. Nope, you were right. <laughs> we switched. That was Ellie. This is Kayla. You were right. Sorry about that. Sorry to confuse everybody here. <laughs> this is Kayla Pardue on floor. <laughs> this is Chloe Hoke in exhibition for BYU. Uh, but going back to the timing, we would have we would set timers, and we would have to wait, get cold, figure out what we needed as an athlete. Um, you know, whether that was going to be talking to teammates or not talking to teammates, staying in the chalk bucket, whatever it may be, every athlete is so different and they find what works for them during that time. And it looks like Taylor's over there just talking to coach. But Kayla heads into her last pass, strong double pike. I love how fast and dy like just dynamic and crisp she is in the air. Good routine for them. We'll see if they can stay above that 9-8 range for SUU. And we're heading back to Taylor here. She's another one of those athletes that does that combination first here. She's gonna go Jaeger to that bail. She has a beautiful toe point. Wow, seemed a little bit far, but she's got those long arms to be able to catch that right into her bail to low bar. Nice handstand. Just a double layout. And it's just a step. So the Huskies ended up with just one stick out of that rotation. But for Taylor, that was great. That's a new dismount for her this year. And so to be able to have it that clean and do it that precise and well is very impressive. You'll see it here again. She does that double layout, keeps her hips flat, and then scoops her feet right at the end there. But very impressive routine. I, that's really the only deduction I really saw throughout. So they'll be able to drop that 9725 for Kristen Lynn. That should be in the mid 98 range. So Huskies will be just around the 49 mark on bars. A little lower than they were hoping to be there. Southern Utah already at 4915. So those two, as we expected, are neck and neck. Yeah, they're same with BYU. They're tied with Southern Utah right now. What a fun, exciting meet. Yeah.
And we have the freshman here, Naya Randolph. And you were talking to me earlier, she did compete a split double layout. I'm not sure if we're gonna see it today, but let's just look at this young lady's power. Double layout with ease. Wow. And we're looking at it from the corner. Her legs were glued, glued. together. And no, I've seen this routine just a couple of times, obviously on the internet and as well as watching it li um, live, but it has gotten better each time she does it. You can see freshmen sometimes a little bit more reserved and to be able to have more fun as the, as the year goes on playing with her teammates here. Of any event, floor is the most different from club to college because you are yes. not encouraged really to emote like this in club. Yes. Second pass, front through, into that double tuck. And she opens her mouth before the ending of that. She knew it was hit. Nice job for freshman Naya. Love the mic drop at the end there. Yeah. Very appropriate. Sometimes it gets a little overplayed, but she truly drops the mic with this tumbling. She does. <laughs> really good air awareness. <laughs> yes. That's it for rotation two. These are flying by, and I mentioned this meet is tight. So, looks like Taylor Russell goes 9875. That is the score she should have deserved with that step, truly, like you said, yeah. the only deduction in that routine. So, Husky's still on top, 98-3, and then Southern Utah and BYU are tied at a 98-05, and then Sac State really doing well to keep pace. Like I said, they can go 197 if they hit all their routines. They're averaging around the 193, 194 mark, which I don't see based on the gymnastics we're seeing today. So awesome to see them hit their stride towards the end of the season. So um, we're gonna step away during this uh, March and warm up, or timed warm up, and, excuse me, one touch warm up. Gone through all the options and uh, we'll see you for rotation three. Rotation number three. 
in this tight, fun, loud, exciting quad meet. I feel like with gymnastics meets, and there's so many little kids, that the screaming just makes it real boisterous. It does. <laughs> it does. And we're getting ready for the third rotation here. And just to kind of keep you guys updated on the scores, it did look like Southern Utah did pull, pull ahead of BYU. They are in second behind the Huskies with a 98.175 and BYU staying at that 98.050. And this is gonna be very exciting for the Huskies. They're coming off of a season high from Oregon State where they stuck five out of six routines, including the dismount. So they're gonna wanna mimic that again today. Didn't see it, but Ellie Cacciola started with a beautiful Yurchenko full vault. Just this tiny hop back. Southern Utah on vault. Sac State on bars. BYU on floor. And then Chelsea Hallinan, the freshman walk-on, who's been the beam leadoff all season. Yeah. I know I mentioned this before, but it's impressive to have a freshman in this leadoff spot. You know, this just it says a lot about their consistency, and you're going to see that right here with her first First test, a front toss right into her back tuck. Solid. That's the best I've seen, and I know a couple of weeks she's had a, quite, a little bit of a wobble, but that was beautiful. And you can just see just from that little shot there how not so wide that beam is as she goes into her leap pass, hitting that 180. She does a great job of staying on releve throughout her dance as well. Full turn. Front aerial, beat jump. Wow, this is her, so far, no wobbles, has great rhythm throughout. She just has the dismount now. Let's see if she can get the stick with her round off one and a half. Just a slight hop, we both tilt our heads back, but that was a great leadoff routine and the best leadoff really routine that we've seen the Huskies have so far. So excited to see what they can do off of that and build on that. And this is the event they need to have separation on. They really need to get up to that 49-4 yes. mark. That was their season high they set last week, 49-45. And it takes at least a 9875 for each athlete. Yes. With this, that shouldn't be far off. This is Eliza Miller Crossman. She rocked beam the last time we saw her. Great precision on those jumps. I really like to see when you're doing turning leaps, if you're doing a full, I want to see a full. I don't want to see three quarters. I don't want to see one and a quarter. Precision is really important. Eliza's a junior from Cincinnati. Whoa, a little bit of a squat between those two. Bounding elements did a nice job maintaining form. And not a break in her performance quality. Really fun, really great lead off for them. This is Emma Morgenthaler. She is having awesome all around on bars. As we head over to beam, Emily Innes. A, another um, newer beam, beamer for the Huskies this year. Um, she's a sophomore and somebody that has always been a very good beam worker, even throughout her club years. So she goes into her front aerial back handspring. Nice job there. I like the rhythm that she had coming out of her front aerial. She kept her arms moving. Cat leap side aerial. Something that you really want to see and look for on beam are their arms being being one. You know, you want to make sure that they are doing the same exact thing as you saw there out of that side aerial and into her leap there. You see that dip of that shoulder, and that's why you're going to see the, a little bit of that balance check. But she covers it well um, to, a, to maybe an eye like us. We see that, but maybe to others you won't. But really good routine so far for Emily. Just has the dismount. We're going to, again, look for the stick here. Round off one and a half. Nice height. And well done. 
You hear, I don't know if you guys can hear the crowd, but it is going crazy. That was a beautiful routine, good rhythm, and an exclamation on that dismount. And Hallinan went 9, 8, 7, 5, so that should be higher. She nailed that landing. Not a visible wobble in sight. Yeah, look at the height on that dismount. Really nice rise. We have Kennedy McLean with that Yurchenko full. That was a night, nice, again, I like seeing her hips that flat throughout, and it was a very nice, clean full, starting at 9.95. This is Olivia Mattern, Matern, excuse me, for BYU. Olivia Redshirt sophomore out of Highland, Utah. And Emily Innes gets that 9.9, so that was just slightly better than Chelsea. And it well-deserved 9.9. You didn't really see much there, just a slight little balance check. Had that leap there, it's, you want to see in a ring leap, you want to see that heel get a little bit closer to the, to the top of their head. Didn't really see much of a bent leg there, so I don't know what the judges will do with that. Taylor Russin on beam. Her final routine as a Husky as we know it. Actually, she's on floor as I've jinxed her. You know, that was, you know, that just seemed a little bit more of a hesitation. Um, you know, she's gonna try it again. She does need this triple series and she does very well with that front aerial back handspring, back handspring. You know, they are allowed to do that extra skill. They are not gonna get deducted for that. So they'll just take deductions for what they see. She goes switch leap into that ring jump. As I mentioned, she did have that back leg closer to her, or back heel, excuse me, closer to her head, as you want to see. Full turn, again, just seems a little bit unsure of herself in this routine. You want to see them settle in, even after a slight bobble, but she's handling it well. She's going right into her dismount. She goes round up one and a half. Good routine. Good routine for Taylor. And last one, like you mentioned, here yes. in the Alaska Airlines Arena. Senior night for her. We haven't talked much about that with all the craziness, but last beam routine, she will be on floor. Not her very best. Last week, she was flawless. Last week, I think she went 9875. Um, so we just expect more of her because she's a senior. We know how much she can deliver. This is the end of Rose Wilson's routine. She had a little bit of a struggle, came off on her uh, setup for that. Before this dismount, she came off, but two solid scores for Sac State to start on bars thus far. Same with BYU, two nine, eight pluses for them on floor. Yeah, SUU, we're hearing their fans. They're also over 9-8 across the board on vault thus far. Yeah, and we just missed a one and a half for them. That was their first 10.0 start value of, of the um, vault rotation. And it was beautiful, had a slight hop forward, but ended up with a 9.825 from Kayla Pardew. So excited we got to see that double layout from Sophie Dudley. In our corner angle, we saw the legs separation there. Not sure if the judges do from where they are. She's the top floor worker on the team. 9925 career high for her. And up next for the Huskies, we have Lana Navarro, another one of those Huskies that have been in the lineup for, for them for the last three years. And she does a very hard triple series right at the top of her routine here. She's gonna go backhand spring, backhand spring layout. She's had a little bit of struggle this season. So let's see if she can dial it in here. Strong arms, very nice job. Going into her leap here, um, beat jump into that switch side. On the switch side, you want to see both of those toes equally um, spread out as, as you saw there. One was a little bit tilted. Full turn. 
Beautifully done. I love how she stays up on that high releve. Just the dismount left for Lana. Really good routine so far. She's going to do a round off one and a half. Just a slight hop back, but really good job for the Huskies after Taylor Taylor had her a li um, little mistakes here and there. That was a great way to bring them back on the on track. Yeah, 9725 for Taylor Russell will be the one that they want to drop. Yeah, and let's take a look at this triple series. Back into back in spring. Look at her eyes right at the end of the beam, where exactly where you want them to be. And then dismount here. Just need to keep her hips flat right to the end to get that stick. But look at her face. She's so excited. And Brinley Christensen for Southern Utah and Vault just nailed a one and a half. Glued the landing. It was fantastic. And we see here Lana did get a 9.9. .9, so that's going to match Emily Innes's 9.9 .9 earlier from this rotation. And that vault that you saw stuck one and a half is we're looking at some pretty big scores yep. right now. So one judge is getting a 9.95 .9 and the other 9.9. .9, so averaging out to be a 9.925, which is the highest, I think, yep. of the meet so far for that rotation. Yep, they took over Skyler's 9.9, <laughs> which was leading from first rotation. Yeah, and who, who better to call on than Skyler for this next routine coming after Lana's 9.9? .9. Arguably the hardest flight series in NCA, the front yes. to back. Front aerial, backhand spring. She knew it. I saw her arms already coming into that high V position before she landed. Loving the confidence that she has. Into her full turn. Drops that heel just a little bit, as you saw. Switch leap, split jump. Nice job. You know, I've seen more sass come from Skylar's dance as she as she keeps doing this routine. She has into her dismount. Oh, just a slight hop forward. The sticks are not quite contagious for the Huskies right now, but strong routine should be in that 9.9 .9 range. Yeah, and those two seniors embracing really, oh, yes. really important, meaningful moment for them. I know you coached both of them in your time at UW. Awesome to see the seniors putting it together on senior night. Yeah. And you see there too with Brenna Brooks, another one of their um, old teammates and final hug from head coach Jen. This is Heidi Schooley. Super high energy to close for them. Sophie Dudley went 9.85. This should be in the 9.8 mark. Really great floor set so far for BYU. And for uh, Sac State, they're putting up one of their best bar rotations for the season. Jillian Laster just went 9.825. Bella Lamidi next for them. Up next for the Huskies, we have Dia Moody. And Skyler is, has another 9-9 for this rotation, so really, really nice job. What's really nice about this sixth position is that Dia, they already have five hit routines. All she has to go up there and do is do what she do does every day in practice, and you know that's hitting a routine. She doesn't really have much to worry about, which is so nice to be in this position. She's gonna do a hard triple series. She goes back handspring, back handspring, or sorry, excuse me. Back handspring, back layout, back layout. Had that slight bobble on the ending there. From my angle, it looked like she was heading towards us a little bit. So to be able to pull that back, just mid, mid skill is very impressive, but she's probably practiced that 5,000 times. <laughs> so really nice job for her. All she has left, doing that triple series is nice. It's a quick routine. All she has left is the dismount here. 
Let's see if she can plant those feet like glue. We'll round off one and a half. I mean, <laughs> uh, the, like the tiniest of hot. Yes. I don't know if, did her feet ever fully leave the floor? I think the mat moved. The mat, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> the mat, let's see it in slow-mo. When you only right have, up. Oh, I mean, minuscule. Minuscule. So you had that tiny balance adjustment, yeah. foot adjustment, and then the series, but that was it. That was this a great rotation for the Huskies. Really good. This is right. Sydney Benson with the hometown Macklemore mix. BYU known for really entertaining choreography. Sydney is senior, Riverton, Utah. Been in 10 of their 11 lineups. And Dia finished out the rotation for the Huskies with a 9.875. So again, really strong rotation. They were able to drop that 9.725 from Taylor Russin and didn't have a score below 9.85. And it's a new season high. So And it's a new season high for them. Exactly what they needed to do. They are on pace for that 197. But I'm so glad you all get to watch Lily Tubbs in exhibition here because she also does this front aerial to back handspring layout, and it is stunning if she hits it. Wow. Wow. So I don't have very many words for that series, but wow. She has the toe point, she has the lines. And she's 5'6", so wow. it just looks different. And has really good flexibility. She does another very cool skill in this routine. I'm not sure if with that triple series she's gonna do it today, but it's called the Liukin, and it is very hard to do. It is a front toss where she lands on one leg and goes right into a scale. You talked about staying on releve for your full turn. She just and defined she just, it right there. Yes, she did. Looks like we're not gonna see the Liukin, but that was the best routine I've seen her do in that exhibition spot. And another good routine for them to have in their back pocket going heading into postseason. Yep. And if you have to replace Taylor Russin and Skyler Killer Wilhelm next year, mm. that is a phenomenal one to slide right in. Yes. And that's again why you like those exhibition spots. Because again, it's not just ex experience. It's at some point, you're going to have graduating seniors, you know, and so you're going to have to be able to build that lineup, and that's exactly what Jen is doing there. Yep, and, you know, when you're on a, a live televised meet, you're often not allowed to have those exhibitions, or they're really frowned upon because the producer wants to keep that thing moving. And so, like you said earlier, to be able to do it on March 15th, mm -hmm. the last regular, se regular season meet of the year, just really solidifies that seventh spot. Yeah, and you saw there, um, Sydney Benson, 9.95. Whoa! Well-deserved, super clean, not the hardest tumbling, but good dance. And Kylie Quinto will close things off for BYU. She's a sophomore from Orem, Utah. Here we cut to her at 9.85 last week. And you talk about, you know, not the hardest of tumbling, right? You know, you, and sometimes that is the strategy. Yep, and it's artistic gymnastics. It's about dance and tumbling. So if you can have flawless tumbling, like that double pike was flawless. She had Textbook. a really good round up a handspring into it. Wow. Good. I love the arms at the end of that, Rudy, really showed control and that she opened from the twist nicely. Not the closed position on that ring leap. You basically do want to kick yourself in the ponytail to show full closure there. BYU already with a 49-3. Wow. And this, if she can nail this landing, we'll see if they hit her hard on that ring leap. That's the only thing thus far. They'll drop that 9-8. Right into the corner to her teammates. Great 
great finish. They have a season high 49.325 going into this. I am sure that is gonna best that score. And that is exactly what we want. Obviously, we're biased here. We want the Huskies to win, but we want all these teams who are near that sort of back half towards the end of the top 36, which is where you wanna be to be seated into regionals. So none of these teams can actually, um, no one can fall out of the 36, top 36 score-wise this week, but they still wanna incrementally move up as, as high as they can. You know, the top 16 teams are seeded into regionals, which means they're one of the first three that are in a more advantageous position. And whoa, one judge went 10 wow. on that. So she goes nine, nine, seven, five. Huge. You saw it in the tumbling. I mean, her tumbling was textbook. Yep. You saw the rise, you saw the landing. Really the only thing that we had, we saw, but you know, the ring leap, but again, the judges are looking right at her. They can't see where that back leg no. ends. So. She really positioned well yes. where she was doing her leaps. As a coach, that's a strategy move, right? It is, but when you do get into pro season, you're gonna have four judges, you know, across or alongside the floor. And so they are gonna see, they are gonna be able to see the little details that might, we might be talking about today. Right, so awesome new season high for BYU on floor. They had those last two, 995, 975. I would say that sets up the Huskies really well. Yes. We can keep that judging mojo going. Maybe we are ridding the, you know, tight judging <laughs> right now. This is Nina Margraf in exhibition. Junior from Spring, Texas. Just been in five floor line, or was in four floor lineups so far this season, so good depth. BYU has used 14 athletes this meet so far. Talk about depth. So much depth. And that's really nice to have, because you know, some you are you are gonna see some teams that have multiple all-arounders, and that's saying that's multiple weeks in a row where you are doing all-around meet after meet. And so be, to be able to have that depth and be able to maybe rest a few athletes throughout the season is so, such a nice thing to have. And as a contrast, Southern Utah's used 10, Washington used 11. Wow. Sacramento State with 11 as well. So like you said, if you can have a, the depth and, you know, it takes a lot of, you know, a lot more from the coaching staff. You need to have a big facility to be able to get everyone the numbers that they need, something BYU has. Southern Utah, 49-2 on vault, a really good score for them. Yeah, they didn't have a score below 9.8, so they stayed pretty consistent um, throughout the rotation. Ellie going 9.825, Nia going 9.825, Kennedy 9.8, Kayla 9.825, and then Brinley 9.925 as an exclamation with that one and a half. And then finally, exhibition, or yes, um, exhibition, Trista had a 9.8. Meet is as expected. Huskies still chipping away, but BYU is within two and a half tenths right now. So Washington leads 147.75, BYU 147.525, Southern Utah 147.375, and Sac State with a 146.35. They're on pace. Sac State is for their highest or their second highest score of the season. And I would say 197 is within reach for the Huskies. They'll need a 49.25 to reach that mark. Important for them to be able to throw away. They've actually had lower road, or excuse me, lower home scores than yeah. road scores this season. Uh, and BYU as well. If they can, you know, actually vault is going to be harder. You need those 10 0 start values to yes. get a 49.5, which is what they would need on vault. But a really serviceable high 196 is in the cards for BYU if they can be consistent on vault. So yeah. we'll uh, take a breather as we head into this exciting fourth rotation. 
don't, or uh, we'll see you soon. <laughs> we'll be back. We are back for the fourth rotation. We talked about how tight this meet is, and the Huskies really have the opportunity here to close out strong. These four judges are as excited as the crowd are. We mentioned they're at a 147.75, so just need a 49.25 to reach that 197 mark. Would love to see them exceed it, of course. You saw the floor line up there for them. Emily Pyers will lead off as they leave the crowd in Caitlin McWilliams will be second, Taylor Resson and Skylar Killer Willem, Emily Innes, and Lana Navarro with a couple exhibitions there at the end. BYU started on vault, Southern Utah is over on bars, and Sac State is on beam as we see that scoring total thus far. Great meet across the board. No team, knock on wood, has counted to fall yet. Yeah, it's been a very strong meet so far, and Really exciting last rotation as we head into it. We're gonna start on floor, like like Alyssa was saying, um, Emily Pyrus, she's been a great add to the Husky team here. She's a transfer from UC Davis and she's been a strong lead off for them as well. Speaking of strong lead off, Brindley Christensen, the freshman there, nails her bar routine that's the sticks that were eluding the huskies on bars she found that double layout had a really strong hiked ganger or excuse me pike jaeger to start so uh that is their strongest event southern utah ranked 16th on bars have a season high 49 475 so another expect. strong lead off again um you know on beam senior emma morgenthaler for sac state didn't have much deduction throughout the routine, didn't have many wobbles, just a slight step on her run up one and a half, but good lead off for Sac State. Let's see if the Huskies can carry that on here. Starting. We, we mentioned um, there, or we didn't mention, there are four all-arounders that play tonight. Emma Morgenthaler is one of them. She's had a great meet thus far. Uh, and then Naya Randolph is behind Skylar Killer Wilhelm right now in the all-around race. And here we go with Emily Pyers. We saw her in, in exhibition on vault. Nice controlled tumbler. Showing off a W in each of the floor teams, so look out for that. Open up with her combination pass, one and a half to front layout. Well done. She is an athlete that's gonna be doing a two pass routine. So she gets her bonus through with that combination pass. And then again, with her last pass here, she gets an extra 10th bonus doing a double back as her last pass. So let's see if she can get her chest up here. It's nice high. That was one of the best ones I've seen her do. She was a little bit off balance, but I like how she got her chest up at the very end there. And a good lead off for the Huskies should be above a 9.8 range, which is gonna be something that they're gonna be needing if they want that 9.87, or sorry, excuse me, 197 <laughs> score. Very clean, very solid lead off. It's really hard to vault and then not do anything. Yes. Until four. <laughs> you gotta stay warm, you have to stay mentally focused. Did a really nice job with that. Alex Retsis over on bars for Southern Utah just came off on her. Maloney, if you heard the crowd make a sound as we see the nice Combo pass from Pyres. 
And Grace Gilman just finished up her beam routine for, um, from Stack State. She did have a big wobble on her series, but was able to gain control back and finish it strong. And Ava Jorgensen from BYU, a huge 9-9 as we see Sophie Dudley very nice and clean. And I saw that vault. We were talking earlier, that full twisting on to that pike off. She stuck it cold. That so that 9-9 was very reasonable. That's awesome to see a 10 start value vault be nailed like that. They're ranked 31st on vault, 49-225 with, like we said, with vault. When you have the start value difference between all the different vaults, it can be hard. That's the lowest scoring event in college gymnastics. I'd and love to see some rule changes on the other events to make it also difficult to get that 10-0 start value just to bring scoring back to earth a little bit. Yes. But we're okay with it being in the stars <laughs> for the Huskies for on now, floor. yes. <laughs> and Emily started out with a 9.85. And this is going to be Caitlin McWilliams. She's a freshman, and she has just earned her spot really in the floor lineup in these last few meets. And she's a powerful tumbler, but a great dancer and you'll see it here in her routine she doesn't just show it off she goes big she starts out with a rudy back layout slight cross legs there but i love that i love that combination pass it's so fun you don't see it very often and so when you do it it makes the crowd go wild watch these straddle jumps Massive. Yes. And I spoke earlier, you want those toes to be even, and that's exactly what she did with pointed feet as well. And she gets it all the way around that 180. But look at this dance. Look at her facial expression. She's not just showing off the moves, she's going bigger with each movement, which is so impressive just for a freshman. She dances with her whole body. Yes. Caitlin heading into her last pass. Round off backhand spring, double pike. Gets it a little bit low, but she gets it all the way in, all the way through. Great routine, and I'll say it, that should be at that 9.85 range as well. So that's gonna be another great routine for the Huskies. Taking a look at that first pass, you see the cross legs there, but nice combination to that back layout. This is Trista Goodman for Southern Utah. Super clean routine thus far. See if she can hone in on the landing. Awesome job. She was coming after the 9-2 from Alex Repsis, and the, so a very great mental routine to get them back on track. We mentioned this is their highest scoring event, so you, they're really looking to get those 985 pluses. That's what Brindley Christensen started with. And the score came through for Caitlin McWilliams, 9.875. So just building on top of Emily Pyrus's routine and up next, we're gonna see Taylor Russin, a senior. This is gonna be her last floor routine in the Alaska Airlines arena. And you know, what you're gonna look for, I always tell, I always told the athletes that were seniors, go out and enjoy it. Well, at the end of the routine, go look for your parents. Look at them. I love that. Just enjoy every single moment. And she's another one, just like Caitlin, who is a natural dancer. You'll see it not just in her fingers, but all the way throughout her entire body, down to her feet. I love this one and a half. So difficult. She, I, she gets it around just barely. Just barely. <laughs> she starts out with a front layout, front full, nice height, good clean form in the air. And the diving twist with the one arm up, I like that technique. Yes. That just goes back to what works for the gymnast. You know, you have different technique for everybody. And you're gonna see a beautiful leap here, switch ring into that torsion say, a, you know, 180 plus in her leaps. She 
just has one more pass left. She's gonna do a double pike to end her routine here. Nice set, best set I've seen. Stop the landing. What a great way to end her last routine here in Alaska Airlines Arena. And her team is ready to erupt. Wow, Celebrate good with her. for Taylor. She worked so hard to get into the floor yes. lineup. It was not a place that they expected her to be at the beginning of the season. And she yep. told Jen, she told Jeffrey, the floor coach and choreographer, I'm gonna make the floor lineup. And has and has done a really good job because she has that beautiful dance in the very clean tumbling. Yeah. That, that cancer was a little bit high, didn't get the best takeoff position, but holds it well. This is Naya Randolph. Love, she does the clear up into the double layout. Awesome combination. Their sticks are contagious over there. They are <laughs> doing a fantastic job. She was, um, club teammates with Selena Harris from UCLA, who also does a combo into her double layout. Jim Katz teach those well. And Sydney Benson goes 9875 for BYU on vault. They are having an awesome day thus far. They're gonna be able to drop probably a 9725. Kylie Quinto's their final vaulter there. Yeah, and she did a beautiful Yurchenko full. She didn't have much direction throughout the air. She kept her hips flat. Just a slight hop forward, like minuscule. So 9.875 was a great score for her. Another senior for the Huskies here, Skylar Killa Wilhelm. And she's gonna slow it down a little bit for us. She has a little bit more of a dramatic routine but matches it with her tumbling as well. She's got dynamic, strong tumbling too. She's gonna start us out with an E tumbling pass. She goes front handspring, front double pull. See if she can keep these feet together. Nice job. You see how she steps out of her front tumbling pass. That is not an induction. It helps the athletes sometimes minimize those deductions by dancing out of the tumbling pass. Leap pass, switch leap to that switch half ring. I love that part. Yeah, that's my favorite. Heading into her last pass, round of one and a half, front layout, love the rise. And a great routine for Skylar. And a great all around performance as well for her tonight. She was on fire throughout. Yeah, absolutely. She is on pace to set a new career high which she's a 39.55 career high. So if she goes above 9.8, she's gonna exceed that, which she should. She's so clean. And like you said, her dance is a little bit more intricate. It's unique. It shows off her tumbling. And I mean, you've seen her progress from how she danced and how she performed as a freshman yes. to how she is today. <laughs> yes. Awesome progress. And Judge One throws up another 10. Love this guy. We're loving Judge One. And a 9.975 for oh, Skylar. And that's a career that high is for her. Absolutely career high. And will be a huge career high all around score for her. She'll go 39.675. Wow. Massive. That is so impressive. And the crowd's going crazy. I mean, that was, as we know it, last routine in the Alaska Airlines Arena. And well-deserved score for her. Yeah, this is the judge you want on senior night. Yes. <laughs> yep. And we will take it here. What a special athlete. And an athlete who has persevered from when your coaching staff was here through COVID, through coaching changes. Mm -hmm. Strong senior leadership is so important.
Yes, and you can just tell the way that her confidence has built throughout her career. I had her as a freshman, and so she was in multiple lineups getting that, uh, that experience. Up next on floor, we have Emily Innes, and you know, she's been put farther and farther back in the lineup as, you know, she has great tumbling, very, very good technique in her twisting, as you see here in her front double fall. Not much you can really take. She has the height, she has the clean form, and I like that she's in this fifth spot for that. I totally agree, because the height and the excitement of this routine, her tumbling, excuse me, the height on her tumbling, her front tumbling rises better than many that you see. Yes. She's one that's going to be doing three passes for them. So this next pass will be a round off one and a half front layout. You're going to be looking for that rise, like I mentioned, right there. As she does, practically sticks to landing and dances right out. Last pass is going to be that another front tumbling to a Rudy. Front hand spring Rudy. See that rise we were just speaking about? She even flares out her arms. <laughs> really fun. Okay, so if Skylar had a 9.975, what would you what would you give that? It's they didn't leave much room for <laughs> you know differentiation, and that doesn't mean there has to be. You only have quarter tenths difference between athletes. Uh, we'll see what our favorite judge one puts up here, <laughs> because you know we'll see if he threw the ten for the senior, and or if he's going to be consistent here. You can look at this tumbling pass again, run off one and a half, and then rise, that rise into that front layout. So they go nine, nine for okay. Emily. What is this judge one? Oh, nine, nine. Love that Rudy dismount from Isabella Neff. Very unique. That is gonna get them back on track. Really important routine for them. That may have been Aubrey Schwartz, the senior. I apologize, I do not know the Southern Utah roster as well as I should. On the scene, this is gonna be exhibition um, Dumas Kuzman here. Just I feel like she knew that she was off in the back handspring, but she was also, her eyes were down to the floor when she, before she landed. So when your eyes go down, typically you'll go down. Now we have Lana Navarro to finish the Huskies off here. And what a fun way to do that with this new routine that she has. Starting out with a double tuck, sticks it. Excellent chest position on that. Yes. You know, you don't see very many gymnasts change their routine halfway through the season, you know, and that's something that's so hard to do sometimes because it's it can mess with your stamina. You have different dance moves to remember, but she loves it, and it really shows in her choreography as well and how she's performing it. Next pass, you're gonna see one and a half front layout. See if it can keep those feet together. Huskies have already exceeded that 197 mark. 197, 175. And all Lana has to do is have a, a score above a 9.8. Oh, yeah, 9.825 to even exceed that even further. If she can get this double pike. We should see that. We want to see that same chest fall on the takeoff and landing here. She does a good job. I wouldn't say it was as tall as her first pass, but very clean double pike at the end. Not much room for deduction. So I, you know, I would be above that 9.8 range. Yep, agreed. Great combination. I'd love to see the two double flips if bookend yeah. the routine. Let's take a look at this um, pass here. First pass, double tuck. See how tall her chest is. Didn't really need to take that step. And then second pass here, round off one and a half. Slight leg separation, as I mentioned. 
but does a nice job in that front layout. And we are going to see a few exhibitions here, or a couple, excuse me, from the Huskies. We are going to see senior Gabby Wickman. I love that they're, you know, let, you know, having her perform here, senior night, last rotation. And she's a Washington native yep, as well. Yep, Kirkland, the true definition of a, of a student athlete. She already has not just an internship lined up, she has a job lined up at Adobe. So moving impressive. Moving to Texas, really rock star student and con contributor to this team. Yeah, and she really has been, just like you mentioned, a contributor since the beginning. She always has a smile on her face when she came into the gym. Yeah. And she was somebody that was so fun. You know, maybe she didn't get a lot of the competition experience, but she was that athlete that you need on the team to be able to build, you know, to keep everyone uplifted and when things might be a little bit hard. This is my first time seeing this one, so. Same. She's gonna start out right off one and a half front layout. Very clean. Very clean. And Gabby's a twister. She loves she loves twisting, so we might see a lot of twisting in this <laughs> routine. <laughs> Competed for Cascade Elite, local club that has produced so many great athletes and so many Huskies. Leap pass. Which side of that Popa? Another one that has great leaps and a great straddle. She heads to, into her next pass here. Gonna go Rudy to a straddle jump. And getting that extra bonus there with that switch side half. What a moment for Gabby Wickman. Throwing up the dubs, holding that extra long. The crowd gives her a standing ovation. And the three seniors Aww. embrace. How special. Really fun to see her put together one of the best floor teams she's done. She has a 9775 career high. She's been in a handful of lineups throughout her career. Yeah. And truthfully, what another routine to have in the back pocket for them. You know, Absolutely. And a senior who has that experience that has competed as well. Yep. And it looks like we thought there was going to be one more exhibition, but that concludes the meet. What a dynamic, fantastic close to the season for three of these four teams. And your Huskies meet their goal. The goal is to go 197. That they did. They go 197, 175. BYU and Southern Utah just behind them, 196.75 and 196.55 respectively. And a great score for Stack State with a 195.35. We'll get the uh, individual results up for you here as the live stats keep loading. It looks like Brindley Christensen wins vault with that one and a half that was stuck so well from Southern Utah. I got that 9.95. Yep, thank you. And his uh, scores refresh. I think Skyler's 9.925 on bars held up. Here, here we're back. I believe so as well. I don't yep. know if I saw anything above a 9.9. And then again on beam, that 9.9 mark. Yeah, so Brinley Anderson oh, from BYU okay. won beam, 9.825. She was coming off the 9.975. And then Skyler and Kylie Quinto from BYU tie for the win on floor with those huge 9.975s. Love us. Some judge won there. And uh, so Skyler Kelly Wilhelm wow. on her senior night sets a new career high all around score, 39.7. Naya Randolph from Southern Utah, 39.275. And then the two Sac State gymnasts set new career highs, Sarah Luttrell and Emma Morgan Thaler. Any closing words? About this was an impressive meet and a great step forward for all the teams here.
that is not this, you know, the 197 is what they were going to be looking for, and that's exactly what the Huskies did. And it's going to only improve their NQS score, just like you were mentioning earlier. You know, the top 36 teams may not change, but you want to make sure that you're seated in, in a position where you're going to be successful at a regional, and that's exactly what this meet was for for them. Um, Sac State has another meet this weekend to be able to build on that as well as they head to Cal on Sunday. And so the Huskies head to the Pac-12 Championships next weekend at the Maverick Center in Salt Lake. They'll be in the afternoon session, hoping to get their first Pac-12 win at that meet. Uh, Southern Utah and Sac State will be at MPSF Champs after Sac State uh, competes on Sunday. And Sac State's hosting those at the Nest in Sacramento. And then um, BYU goes to the Big 12 Championships. And this is what's happening on the floor right now is <laughs> one thing that is so special and unique about college gymnastics is the interactivity with fans, the young fans that really bring so much energy. I think we exceeded 5,000 fans in Alaska Airlines Arena tonight, which is a great mark for them. Really appreciate it. Yeah, it just felt good, and you can tell it was infectious because these teams had some of their best meets. Nobody counted a fall. You know, just a really fun meet. And for Bailey Rowe, it was so exciting. <laughs> to commentate alongside with you and um, you as well. I'm Elisa Mao and we are signing off. We'll see you next year.
results, a tie for third place. Two Sacramento Hornets, Sarah Luttrell and Emma Morgenthaler. Nine point, I'm sorry, the total of 39.1 points. In second place, Southern Utah Thunderbird, Nyarandov. 39.275. And in first place with an overall score of 39.7, University of Washington Husky Scholar Kill And our final team results this afternoon. In fourth place, Sacramento State Hornets with a score of 195.35. Finishing third, Southern Utah Thunderbirds, 196.525. Finishing second, BYU Cougars, 196.75. And in first this evening, your Jim Dogs, 196.175. to support Seattle Youth and Foster Care. Carter Subaru, the official automotive sponsor of UW Athletics. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the floor as we honor seniors representing each program tonight. First up, the BYU Cougar seniors, Alex Mason, Sydney Benson, Anna Bramlett, Elise Rollins, Anissa Alvarado, and Lindsay Hunter Kimbler. Let's hear it for the BYU seniors. Congratulations. Next, the Sacramento State Hornets. Senior Simone Dumas Guzman. Sarah Fitzgerald. Bella Lamidi. Emma Morgenthau, Tori Tapner, and Caitlin Searle, who was unable to join us today. Let's hear it for the Sacramento State Seniors. Congratulations to all of you. And our Southern Utah Seniors, Ali Kotu. Anna Hartley and Aubrey Schwartz. Let's hear it for the Southern Utah seniors. Congratulations.
that she uplifts those around her and inspires them to greatness. Skylar is a natural vocal leader, but her work ethic and attitude in the gym backs up her words, and I'll just miss all of her fun facts and jokes that she makes in the gym. One thing I really admire about Skylar is her work ethic. She's an amazing role model, and I have always looked up to her, even from freshman year. And one thing I'm going to miss about her is her silly little jokes she tells every day, or even just the words that come out of her mouth. She's so funny, and she's a great person to be around. Jim Dog fans, Skyler Kilo. since her freshman year. She's notched a career high 9.9 .9 on vault, 9.975 on bars, 9.925 on beam eight times, and 9.975 on the floor tonight. She earned a career high 39.575 all around score earlier this season and route to her second career Pac-12 coaches Choice of the Week Award. Skyler was selected for the All Pac 12 Meet First Team in her sophomore season, as well as All Conference All Around Honorable Mention. She was named to the Pac 12 Gymnastics Preseason Watch List both her junior and senior seasons. Skyler is also a nominee for the 2024 AAI Award, which is given to an outstanding senior collegiate gymnast at the end of the season. Skyler is joined tonight by her mother, Jan, her sister, Sayla. Her father, unfortunately, couldn't make it tonight, but sends his love and support from back home. Skyler received her nursing assistant certification this past summer on her degree in Washington in public health, global health. She plans on finishing three requirements to attend an accelerated nursing school in order to receive a Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Skyler hopes to later work as a registered travel nurse and eventually become a nurse practitioner. Hey, dog fans, give it up one more time for Skyler Kilwilhelm. Taylor, you are such a hard worker inside and out of the gym. It has been amazing seeing you step into a leadership role, and over the past two years, I'm grateful to say that we were teammates. I cannot wait to see what you accomplish in the future. Love you so much. Taylor, you are the epitome of the perfect role model. You are the most hardworking, dedicated, and supportive person I've ever met. In my short time here at UW, you have been like my wiser older sister, who I can go to about everything and anything. I love our weekly food runs and just being able to hang out with you. You are who I want to be when I grow up as both a gymnast and a person. I love you. Taylor, you are so amazing inside and out. The way you have stepped up into such a strong leadership role these past two years has been so inspiring. Your hard work and amazing personality has shown both through your gymnastics and academics. All of your hard work has paid off and it shows every day, every meet, and every turn you take. I can't wait to spend these last few moments together. I wish you the best in your next chapter. Thank you. Student Athlete of the Quarter. After she graduates from the UW, 
Taylor plans to attend graduate school to earn a Master of Science in Information Management. So far, she has received admission offers from each of the programs she has applied to. Later, Taylor hopes to pursue a career in database administration or another similar field. Hey, dog fans, wish you all the best for Taylor Rusty. One thing I love about Gabby is her outlook on life and how positive and bubbly she is. It's a quality everybody hopes they have in an athlete. Gabby is one of the hardest workers in the gym. She's always taking turn after turn to make herself better, and I will miss rotating with her on bars and all of our conversations at the top box. One thing that stands out to me about Gabby is her dedication. No matter what's going on outside of the gym, Gabby always makes time to come in and get her assignments done. Chip Dog fans, Gabby Whitman. Gabby holds career highs at 9.725 on the uneven bars when she has hit four times and a 9.775 on the floor. Gabby is joined tonight by her father, Ken, her mother, Danette, as well. Gabby's younger sister, McKenna, could not fly out tonight, but wishes Gabby the best. Gabby will be earning her degree from Washington in Information Systems, as well as Business Operations and Supply Chain Management. Gabby was the 2023 recipient of the University of Washington's Core Values Award, where a student athlete is nominated by faculty, staff, and students for exemplifying the university's core values of grit, growth, mindset, and committed service and humility. She was named to the 2022 Pac-12 Winter Academic Honor Roll her sophomore year and earned the 2022 and 2023 All-Conference Academic Honor Roll. This past August, Gabby accepted a job offer from Adobe and will be moving to Austin, Texas right after graduation, where she will be working as a strategic business development and solutions consultant for Adobe's Document Cloud. Hey, dog fans, wish all the best for Gabby Whitman. All right, dog fans, how about one more time for our three seniors, Skylar Willow, Killer Wilhelm, Gabby Whitman, and Taylor Russian. Good luck. And thank you. All right, Jim Dog fans, thank you for attending tonight's meet and supporting the team all season long. Make sure to tune in to the Pac-12 Networks next Saturday to catch the Jim Dogs in action at the Pac-12 Championship. And we'll see you back here next season. Go Huskies!